or two. Uh, we're just uh, trying to organize a couple things here before we got started. Um, my name is uh, County Commissioner Al French. I'm the uh, uh, vice chair. And uh, for the record, we have uh, Chair uh, Mary Cuny on the line joining us, but she is traveling. And so uh, we're going to fill in for her and she'll participate uh, telephonically with the rest of the uh, meeting. And then I'm also joined uh, by uh, Commissioner Josh Kern. So uh, with that, uh, we are going to start out the meeting uh, with a proclamation. And I'll look to uh, Commissioner Kearns to read the proclamation into the uh, record. Thank you, Commissioner French. I will read this proclamation in the form of a motion. It is a proclamation in the matter of proclaiming May 2022 Mental Health Awareness Month. Whereas, in, whereas our county, state, and nation have been experiencing the effects of mental health, and presently one in five Americans have experienced a mental health illness and whereas May has been designated nationally as Mental Health Awareness Month for some 73 years and whereas one in five Americans have reported that the pandemic had a significant negative impact on their mental health. We encourage our citizens to not suffer in silence. We encourage our citizens through education and community resources to seek help. And whereas even before the pandemic, millions of Americans, including youth in our own communities were experiencing stress, anxiety, suicidality, and depression. Now more than ever, it is important to increase our mental health literacy and eliminate the stigma surrounding mental health. Now, therefore, we, the Board of County Commissioners of Spokane County, on behalf of the citizens of Spokane County, do hereby proclaim May 2022 as Mental Health Awareness Month. In Spokane County, we recommit uh, our community to raising awareness, increasing mental health literacy, and eliminating the stigma and discrimination by promoting an accessible and uh, appropriate services and resources for all the people with mental illness, dated the 10th day, May 2022, Board of Spokane County Commissioners, Mary Cuny, Al French, and Josh Kearns. I will second the motion. Commissioner Cooney, are you there? Yes, can you, can you not hear me? I will, I will second the motion. See her, but my suspicion is that we're having some challenges in terms of the audio. So I will go ahead and second the motion. And uh, before we vote on the motion, any uh, comments, uh, Commissioner Kearns? This is just, I mean, quite frankly, this is a this is one of those issues that unfortunately has become more common uh, over, over the last several years. Um, it absolutely, as stated in the, in the proclamation, has been compounded by the pandemic. And so I think it's very important that we're taking a stand today and supporting folks to, to really get, get the help they need, eliminate stigmas surrounding mental health. So um, th thank you to the individuals who brought this forward. And thank you for all the folks that are working in that industry to, to help folks in our community. Thank you, Commissioner Kearns. And so, uh, Commissioner Cooney, uh, any comments that you might want to share? We'll see if this works now. Can you hear me now? No. Evidently, we're still having some challenges and stuff. So, uh, so I will uh, weigh in while we're trying to uh, get Commissioner Cooney connected with us. Um, we can see her online. She's just having trouble with the audio portion of it. But uh, I echo um, uh, Commissioner uh, Cooney's con or C Kearns's comments with regard to the uh, uh, need of awareness, heightened awareness with regard to the challenges that have been created uh, by COVID and, and particularly the, the challenges that have created uh, for our mental health uh, of our community. And, and, and uh, just recently was made aware of some statistics as uh, far as uh, the impact of uh, 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 mental health for our um, uh, uh, youth in, in school, whether it's uh, high school uh, and or colleges for that matter and stuff. And so uh, this, this has been a challenging couple of years. And uh, so we, uh, we ask for patience, we ask for understanding, 
Um, we're committed to try and provide the resources necessary to uh, help uh, get us out of this, uh, this situation where we can and to assist those that uh, are suffering uh, to uh, uh, provide the services they need. So uh, one more time to see if Mary Cooney uh, can provide any comments for us. Let's see, I'm trying again to see if you can hear me. I take off You certainly mute. know that she's trying and yeah. I know it's a difficult place to communicate. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, call for the vote. So all those in favor of the motion uh, as presented, please indicate by saying aye. 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 And um, she can use the, use the thumbs up emoji or raise it. There we go. <laughs> And I, that's a firm, solid I, I tell you. We got it, uh, Commissioner Cooney, so thank you. Uh, so let the record reflect that the motion passes unanimously. And I know that we have um, Phil Tyler here to accept the uh, proclamation. So Mr. Tyler, if you wanna come up and share some comments and then we'll do a photo op. Thank you. Thank you, uh, commissioners. This, this proclamation is both uh, timely and important. And in the midst of any crisis, and it's undoubtedly a crisis for our nation, our state and our county, this mental health crisis, it's important for uh, their citizens to know that their county officials or county leaders, uh, including my good friend Scott here, um, takes their safety, both physical and psychological safety important. And this proclamation is an affirmation for all those that are struggling or suffering with mental health uh, in their lives. And it's important to understand that mental health affects us all. And this proclamation says clearly and loudly to the citizens that whoever you are, whether it be our citizens with disabilities, our LGBTQIA plus citizens, our black citizens, indigenous, Hispanic, Asian Pacific Islanders, that their county leaders, they see them, they hear them, and they are there to support them through this mental health crisis. And I think that by this proclamation and your um, unanimous, unanimous uh, vote uh, for this proclamation that tells your citizens that you care about them and it's important. And we're gonna do all we can to work to reduce that stigma and to get them uh, the help and the resource that they need. So thank you very much for this. And it means a lot to us as citizens. you or all right well thanks for letting us be here today um we did speak to this uh last week in monday's meeting but 
We will go through it one more time. Uh, we are very excited to uh, bring this to you guys today as part of your agenda um, as we present the local 492 master contract uh, that we are hoping to have signed for ratification today. So I will bring Josh Grote up, our employee laboring relations manager, and he will present the details for you. So just one correction, this is the mental health professionals in our detention services. Um, and so this is a total of eight employees at our um, detention services that employ or uh, provide mental health um, services to the inmate population. We reached a tentative agreement with the bargaining unit on April 22nd or 21st, and they vote in favor of the agreement on April 22nd. And you will see the yearly cost of um, year one is 40,000, year two is approximately 59,000, year three is approximately 51,000. And then for an additional half year to get this contract off cycle with some of the other bigger contracts, um, it's an additional $24,000 for that half year. So some of the major changes in this uh, agreement are, um, New language regarding health care and health insurance um, gives the county the ability to modify it, um, but still provide adequate coverage for the employees. Um, we were able to negotiate in language regarding um, the introduction of lag pay during the term of this agreement, which is a major issue for the county. Um, like I stated before, move the contract off cycle um, to a three and a half year agreement instead of the typical three year agreement. So it will expire in June of 2025. Uh, we were able to get new liability language um, for our grievance procedure um, to 180 days before it was open-ended um, on that. And then just other um, areas of cleanup throughout the entire contract. Uh, additional holiday of Juneteenth beginning this year and they were moved to the classification study um, or will be moved to the classification study upon approval by the board. Um, and so you will see that they also received COLAs of 3% in 2022, 3% in 2023, 3% in 2024, and 1.5% in 2025 to do that half year. And they also received a one-time $500 uh, lump sum payment for ratification on the first attempt, which they did. So those are some of the major highlights of this agreement. Um, do the commissioners have any questions? Any questions for Mr. Grote? Anything for follow-up? Yes. Uh, we are very excited um, and thankful. We were um, able to negotiate this contract uh, in just a few meetings and in uh, open negotiation settings. So we are very excited that we were able to come to this agreement so quickly and, and we're excited for our employees to be able to um, move to the classification study and see the adoption of the holiday of the Juneteenth. Great, thank you. And, uh, and also kudos to you for being able to uh, uh, demonstrate another contract we were negotiated in uh, the open so the public can uh, view uh, uh, what's going on and uh, see how their taxpayer dollars are being spent. So I appreciate uh, your efforts and your leadership in that area and that it is possible. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Kearns. Can I ask, so, so what, how many is that total of bargaining units that it would, once this is adopted today, how many does that, that have been fully open, ne negotiated and adopted? Uh, fully opened, negotiated, uh, approximately seven to nine. I don't okay. remember the exact number off the top of my head. All right. Sounds good. Very good. Thank you. And uh, uh, Commissioner Cooney did uh, uh, text that she had no questions and stuff. So uh, for the record, it's interesting. Uh, I did get receive a, a text that indicated that those on Zoom can hear Commissioner Cooney it's just us here in the room have not uh, been able to hear her. So if we could uh, spend some time working on that between now and next week, I think that would be very helpful. We, uh, this, we're, still, we're still test driving uh, the new facilities and stuff. So um, we're finding interesting things. So, and that's, that's just what it is. So uh, without any more discussion then, uh, the chair is open to a motion on items two, three, uh, four, and five. 
and all the sub items. Mr. Chair, I move to approve items two, three, four, and five, including all sub items on today's consent agenda. And Commissioner Cooney has indicated that she is seconding the motion. And so um, um, any uh, discussion? So all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 And Commissioner Cooney is also an aye. This is really surreal. I got to tell you, this is <laughs> so. Um, so that then gets us to item uh, six, which is a final hearing item. And uh, I understand that Tessa is going to provide the presentation on this. Yeah. Or Gary. Sure. can send it by chat too. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, commissioners. Um, this, this is the second and final hearing, of course. This was um, brought to your attention and briefed on earlier um, uh, last month. And th what this is, is the summation of the budget uh, item amendments uh, that we wish to make now, because these are a lot of things have uh, changed since the start of the year, and this combines those changes along with all of the applications for grants. And so this recognize this budget amendment recognizes those grants, those departments that you see. Um, the one thing that uh, is uh, very material is the small arms range and the recognition that because that's coming up shortly. So that's on item uh, J under other funds for 37,252,000. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Petrovich. And, and this is uh, typical, we go through this every year in terms of making budget adjustments after we've closed out the previous year and, and understand where adjustments have to be made. So i uh, look to my fellow commissioners, uh, do you have any uh, questions or? Uh, comments for Mr. Petrovich, and uh, I'm assuming Commissioner Cooney does not either. Nope. Okay. So uh, with that, then this is a hearing item, so I will open it up for anybody in the audience like provide any testimony on hearing item number six, our annual budget adjustments. Uh, and, and of course, if you are Zooming, uh, please uh, raise your hand, or if you are on the phone, uh, please uh, press star nine, and uh, we can uh, hopefully hear your comments. So second call for anybody who wants to provide comments. Third and final call. See, nobody uh, expressed a desire to comment. Um, I will close the hearing on item here in item number six, general fund and other funds budget, and uh, look to my fellow commissioners for any comments you might have. Then I'll call for the vote. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Uh, Got to move the motion. Oh, Mr. Chair, I move to approve agenda item number six as presented as a final hearing item on today's agenda. Thank you. And I've got a second. So now, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Aye, aye. And Mary has got the aye. So uh, let the record reflect the motion passes unanimously then. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you. Then moving on to uh, uh, public hearings uh, number seven. We're gonna take these a little out of order. Um, I'm gonna take 7C first because I think we've got a timing issue. Um, this is in the matter of repealing Spokane County Resolutions number 04-0211, 09-0465, 09-0585, and 20-1030, and 21-0048 regarding the establishment of a tourism promotion area and other matters related there too, Mr. Maceo. Uh, thank you very much, Vice Chairman French. And for the board members, this is Jim Maceo speaking. I'm a special deputy prosecuting attorney. 
The item before you that uh, Vice Chairman French announced is simply a procedural matter. As the Board of County Commissioners is aware, in, 19, in, in 2004, the Board of County Commissioners established a tourism promotion area within Spokane County. The purpose of a tourism promotion area is to set forth a mechanism where lodging businesses can collect from people staying there a certain charge and then that charge can be used to generate more economic development within Spokane County. Spokane County was the first county to form a tourist promotion area in 2004. The tourism promotion area that the county established includes all the unincorporated area of Spokane County, the city of Spokane, and the city of Spokane Valley. In conjunction with the formation of the tourism promotion area, the Board of County Commissioners was required to enter into an interlocal agreement with the city of Spokane and the city of Spokane Valley. Under that interlocal agreement, which was modified recently, any one of the signatories to it had the ability to formally terminate the tourism promotion area by giving notice to the other signatories. On November 5th, 2021, the city of Spokane sent a correspondence to Spokane County and the city of, excuse me, the city of Spokane Valley by formal action on November 5th, 2021, sent notification to the city of Spokane and Spokane County that they intended to terminate the tourist promotion area as of 1159, December 31st, 2022. As a result of the city's action it is necessary for the Board of County Commissioners to formally hold a public hearing and rescind the ordinances that you've adopted previously, which established the tourism promotion area, as well as to set forth the charges within the tourism promotion area. I've taken the liberty of sharing this particular notice of public hearing uh, with the city of Spokane and the city of Spokane Valley. They're aware, with, aware of it and they agree with it. As the board has previously been advised, the lodging businesses within the city of Spokane and the city of Spokane Valley and the four in the unincorporated area are presently looking at their options to consider moving forward with a new tourist promotion area. So Vice Chairman French, the purpose of this particular public hearing is for the Board of County Commissioners to consider public testimony and take action on rescinding the various resolutions which are identified in the overhead and which you announced at the uh, uh, start of this particular public hearing. That's my presentation. Unless the board has some questions, I will uh, sit down. Any questions for Mr. Maceo? And uh, Commissioner Cooney, any questions you might have? We'll see if this works now. No questions from me. Ooh, oh, we can. Can you hear me? No? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, very good. OK, there we go. It's working now. So I didn't hear the first part of it uh, when I asked if you had any questions. Did you have any question? So, no further questions from me. Thank you. Uh, so we will go ahead and um, open up the um, uh, public hearing for anybody in the audience like for any testimony on hearing item uh, 7C, like in Charlie. And again, if you're on Zoom, please raise your hand or if you're on the phone, press star nine. Second call for anybody who wanted to provide testimony on hearing item 7C. Third and final call, seeing nobody indicate that they want to provide testimony, I will close the hearing and look to my fellow commissioners for direction. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to approve a resolution in the matter of repealing Spokane County resolution number 04-0211, 09-0465, 09-0467, 20-1030 and 
21-0048 regarding the establishment of a tourism promotion area and other matters related thereto. I will second that motion. I will second the motion. Thank you. So we've got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 I let the record reflect the motion passes unanimously. Thank you. And thank you, Mr. Amacio, for following up on this. So then that gets us to uh, public hearing number 7A, like an alpha. This is to consider the establishment of County Road 41st Avenue, uh, Burnson Court, and Bogey Court in the Platte Trickle Cree 4th Edition County Engineers Road File number 2669, Mr. Zerocor. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Matt Zaracor, Spokane mm -hmm. County Public Works, here to talk to you today about the establishment of Trickle Creek 4th Edition, including the roads 41st Avenue, Burnson Court, and Bogey Court. Uh, next slide, please, Ron. You can see from the vicinity map, this is located in the southeast corner of Spokane County's urban area on the South Hill and very near the intersection of 37th and Glen Rose. Next slide, please. So the roads identified have been examined by Spokane Public Works staff to determine if they should be recommended for establishment as county roads. Uh, the examination found that the roads are necessary to provide access to the platted lots. They have proper endpoints and general alignment and they have the proper right-of-way width. The locations have been established by survey and they have been constructed and certified to meet county standards. These criteria are established in RCW 3681. And considering the above, I recommend the Board of County Commissioners establish these roadways and be happy to answer any questions and be available for any public comments. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Zirakor? None for me. Great, thank you. So uh, with that, then I'll go ahead and open the public hearing for, um, uh, for comment. Uh, so if there's anybody in the audience to like provide any comment on hearing item 7A, uh, please uh, uh, indicate so, or if you're on Zoom or uh, the phone, uh, Zoom, raise your hand on the phone, star nine. Second call for anybody who wanted to provide testimony on hearing item 7A. Third and final call, seeing nobody come forward, I'm gonna go close the hearing and look to my commissioners for direction. Mr. Chair, I move to uh, accept the county engineer's recommendation to consider the establishment of County Road 41st Avenue, Burnson Court and Bogey Court in the Platte Triple Creek 4th Edition County Engineer's Road File number 2669. I will second that motion. Thank you, I've got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Aye, let the record reflect the motion passed unanimously. Then moving on to hearing item 7B, uh, like in boy, uh, in the matter of receiving Spokane County traffic code number 46.44.041, uh, delete add load limit, Chatteroy Road Bridge number 3801, additional load limit, uh, Connor Road Bridge number 4404, Mr. Zirocor. Thank you, Commissioner French. Um, I have three, uh, three different traffic code revisions that are all rolled into this one resolution. One of them is removing the Chatteroy Road Bridge um, current load limits and replacing them with the new ones, and then also adding load limits to Connor Road Bridge. Um, the reason that these changes are being placed is Connor Road was recently evaluated and found to be um, insufficient to carry full loads, so it's being limited. And the other replacement is due to new software that's being promulgated by FHWA in evaluating bridges. So that's the reason for that change. Um, and also just as a note on both all of these, the emergency services for the area have been contacted and their, their vehicles that they use for those areas have been evaluated and they, they're adequate for those purposes. So emergency services is aware of that. All right, um, next slide, please. 
the first bridge we're looking at is in Chatteroy in the northern part of the county, uh, just directly west of Highway 2. Uh, next slide. And this bridge is one that we're, we're putting in for funding now for, and make sure I'm gonna double check my notes here. And we'll know by the end of June whether we were successful in obtaining that funding. Um, so we're hopeful on that one. Uh, the current detour for this one requires people to go approximately a half a mile north to Schlomer Road and then drop back down south on Yale. So the detour isn't too significant. And again, that's just for the loads that are beyond the posting limits. And next slide, please. The other bridge we're talking about today for the postings is Connor Road Bridge, and this is out in the Valley Ford area. You can see Palouse Highway there just north of it. And next slide. This is just a zoom in of that. It's just directly west of Sands Road. The detour of this requires people to go approximately a mile west and then a half a mile north to tie back into Palouse Highway. And again, emergency services have been contacted regarding these. And that's it. I am happy to answer any questions the board may have and any public testimony. Any questions for Mr. Zirkor? No questions for me, thank you. Thank you. So uh, I will uh, open up the uh, public hearing for anybody in the audience that like to provide any testimony on hearing item number 7B uh, as presented. Um, Again, if you're on Zoom, uh, please raise your hand. If you're on the phone, it's a star nine. So second call for anybody who wants to provide testimony. Third and final call, seeing nobody express a desire to provide testimony. I'm gonna close the hearing and look to my commissioners for direction. Mr. Chair, I move that we accept the county engineer's recommendation in the matter of revising Spokane County Traffic Code number 46.44- or I'm sorry, 46.44.041, delete add load limits Chatteroy Road Bridge number 3801 and add load limit Connor Road Bridge number 4404. I will second that motion. Thank you, got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate saying aye. 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 I and I, so let the record reflect the motion passed unanimously. Uh, that then gets us to uh, our bylaw item uh, number eight, uh, which is um, a, um, a resolution in the matter of authorizing a grant application to the Washington State Department of Transportation for funding assistance under the Zero Emission Vehicle Infrastructure Partnership Grant. And um, do either one of you want to give us a short presentation on this as a by leave item? I didn't really have a presentation. I, the board did ask me to do some research into free wire industries. Yes. I did some work uh, looking into them. They are pre approved by the um, Enterprise, uh, Washington Enterprise Services for this uh, application. And they're uh, a substantial company. Uh, that was established in 2014. Okay. So uh, I'm going to look to um, our uh, legal counsel in terms of uh, we uh, have been discussing uh, new rules of procedure with regard to uh, providing testimony on uh, by leave items and stuff. And so is it your direction that we provide an opportunity for testimony on uh, by leave item number eight? June 9th is when that's going to take place. So you okay. don't have to uh, follow 1329 at this point. Very good. I just wanted to make sure that I was complying with uh, all the latest regulations and stuff. So then the, um, the chair is open to a motion. Mr. Chair, I move to approve by leave item number eight, a resolution on the matter of authorizing a grant application to the Washington State Department of Transportation for funding assistance under the Zero Emissions Vehicle Infrastructure Partnership Program grant. I will second the motion. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion on this? Mr. Cooney? Uh, no. Okay. Just, I, I, I guess I would just say thank you, Chad, for looking into that uh, question that, that we had and ensuring that the business was a valid business. 
Very good. So uh, with that, then all in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. So, Commissioner Cooney, we weren't able to identify whether you were in favor of the motion or opposed to it. Um, I said aye. We didn't hear it. I apologize. <laughs> Anybody out there here? No, I'm just kidding. No, uh, we didn't hear it for some reason. So, I apologize for that. Uh, thank you. So, the ayes have it. Uh, that completes all the business that's coming before us um, uh, on our uh, formal agenda. Are we uh, convening for any additional business after the meeting? So that completes all the business before the county uh, board of commissioners. And so it is now uh, 2.37 and uh, we are adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day.